My name is Evan with Pamaki USA. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the features that are inside of Fine Cut. Um, once Fine Cut's installed, you'll have a little toolbar here, and under the File menu, we also have an entry for Fine Cut where you can select all the same options that are in the toolbar from this window here. Today we're using Mamaki Fine Cut 8 with Adobe Illustrator CS3. I'm going to go over all these little buttons and show everybody what they do here. So I'm going to start off with the information button. This tells us that we're using Fine Cut 8, specifically this is version 8.0.5. And this gives us two quick links to the operation manual if you need more information on each of these topics and also the information that we keep up on our website. Probably the most important thing that we have to do once Fine Cut is installed is go ahead and set up our plotter. So this little icon right here will open the plotter user setup window. Be sure you've selected the model of plotter that you're currently using. We're going to set this up as a CJV30. Command, step size, and approximation type are normally left the same for any machine that we use. The only time you'd ever change these is if any one of these three items have been changed on the machine itself. Once you've selected your plotter, go over here to the communication tab and tell it whether your plotter is connected via the serial port or the USB port. We're going to use USB for this demonstration, although right now we're just doing this on a PC, so I do not have a CJV plugged into the computer at this point. If we did, when I drop down this box, there would be a little item that says USB followed by a hyphen followed by either the serial number or the name designation of that CJV30. Once you've selected these, run your connection test and just verify that the machine or that your computer can currently communicate with the plotter. So once you've selected your model and its communication type, click Setup. And that's everything we have to do right here on the plotter user setup. Now the primary method for getting data that we have in Illustrator or Corel Draw out to our machine is by using either this plot icon, the plot selected path icon, or by sending everything out to Rasterlink. So if I go through and pick my Mamaki logo here, and do plot selected path. This will bring up the main cut screen. So if everything looks good here, we essentially just hit the plot button. On this screen, however, there's a few other options we can do. We can zoom to different aspects of the media size or have it zoom into the image that we have. So right now our Mamaki is going to be cutting somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 centimeters by just shy of about 50 centimeters. If you're used to working in Imperial units, you can switch it on the screen over here to the right. So we've got a Mamaki logo that's somewhere in the neighborhood of about seven inches left to right. These guys up here let you custom define a sheet size. We can offset the image so it starts in a different location. We can use our scroll bars to zoom around so we can see everything that's on the material. I can also go through here and zoom to an aspect that lets me see everything on the screen. Can increase the number of copies that I've got on here, as well as go through and change the margins in between the copies. Rotation, mirroring is available if we're going to apply this in reverse. Can also just lock my origin or unlock the scale if I wanted to make this taller, wider, or just change its aspect ratio. Other items on here. Tiling basically lets us take our logo that we have on here and separate it into smaller pieces. So if I did want to do a 20 foot wide Mamaki logo using 4 foot wide vinyl, this lets me divide everything up into smaller pieces. The registration mark session we'll talk about in just a little bit. Once you've got your cut lined up where you want it, what we want to do is go over here and hit the plot button. And if I had my machine hooked up, I basically just go through and hit plot and it will send everything off to be cut. For now, I'm just going to save all these settings as a file. What this will do is save a file called fccommand.dat. I'm going to have it save it on my desktop. This contains all the instructions the machine will need to actually output this file onto vinyl. Once I've got that saved, I can either re-import that file back into Illustrator or I can send it directly off to the plotter at a later date. 
I'm going to hit end on there. The option right here to the left that says plot is very similar to plot selected. Main difference being is it's going to try to plot everything that's on the screen. So in addition to the Mamaki logo, it will also have these two squares or four squares that I've drawn here along with these little lines that are down here at the bottom. Um, when you're looking at this, it's also a good idea to check your actual cut line. Sometimes you'll see things that are printed here that aren't necessarily going to be cut data, or you may have too much cut data if you've got a fairly complex vector object. And the last option for output is to send all this information over to Rasterlink. So the screen's fairly similar. Big differences here are one, we have a print preview tab as well as a cut preview tab and then a print end cut that shows us both of them on the same screen. Rather than cutting, what this icon does is send our job into Rasterlink, which is Mamaki's RIP software. Once it's in Rasterlink, the cut data cannot be modified. So any size changes, any number of copies, anything like that we want to do, we have to do in this window before it's sent over to Rasterlink. Once Rasterlink has the job, I lose the ability to scale, resize, or make significant modifications to the cut data that's in the file. Other than that, though, we do have about the same options that show up in the regular cutting window. This section right here will show you which section is going to be printed and which sections are going to be cut. So since I've enabled cutting here, my print stays the same, but you notice my cut information has data on it now as well. And again, like the fine cut plot window, once you have all your options set, go through and click output and that will output everything to raster link. At that point, we can do a print and cut from within the RIP software. So these are our main output tools. The remainder of the guys on here are really object manipulation or dealing with those plot files that I exported earlier. So we're going to start off by talking about these plot file output tools. Earlier when I went and cut, I saved that fc command.dat. I can re-import the raw vector information back into either CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator if I want to modify it later. Now you will notice though that when it imports, it's from the raw plotter information. So you're going to notice there's a lot more points on your curves. So this is not identical to the vector file that this Mamaki is made out of. You'll notice how this A right here has a nice, nice smooth curve going through it. The raw cutter output has to break that into much smaller arcs to be able to go through the machine. So if you do do this method to save cut information, bear in mind it's saving it as raw machine instructions. So you're going to get a little more data than what was in the original file. Now the other option right next to it is if I don't want to open the file, but I just want to go through and actually send it to the plotter. I would do exactly the same thing. Scroll down here select my file I saved. Now in this case I can't communicate with the plotter because it's not plugged in but if I had it on there and he was in remote that file would go ahead and start cutting. So this is also a way to save cut data if you spent a lot of time setting up a very specialized cut job you can always save it under the plot dialog and then re-export it to the machine later. The remainder of the icons on here are really more about path and object manipulation. So we'll start up here at the top and kind of go over to the right. This first one basically recognizes recognize stroke weight and overlap is for combining two objects. So if I go through and cut this right now, it's going to attempt to cut out both of these squares. So I'm going to have some lines going through here that I don't necessarily want the knife going through. By hitting this button, it'll basically combine these into a solid shape. So if I had a company logo that was vectorized, that had some extra lines in here, I can get rid of any excess lines that are in there. Next option over is for trapping, and this is commonly used if we're using spot colors such as silver or white. By trapping, I can go through and specify how far I should trap one object into another object. Now the change doesn't look real evident there. When I highlight it, you'll notice that the blue square is now trapped a little bit into the red square. What this allows me to do is if I'm using white or silver, I can make sure they're tucked inside the edges of my color. Or if I'm doing this as a cut job and this was my cut path, I can control whether my cut path is inside or outside the graphic. 
one common use of this is to make sure we don't have any white strips of vinyl on the outside of our graphic as we're going through this. Next option over is a fairly commonly used one. This one's called frame extraction. What frame extraction does, if I pick my Mamaki object here, when he goes to cut, the cut line is going to be right where all these blue highlighted lines are, which means I'm going to get the word Mamaki, but it's going to be broken up into the pieces of the letters that it's made out of. By coming over here and doing frame extraction, I can basically have it go through and run a line around everything automatically for me. Tell it how far away I want my line, how I want the corners to look, click OK, and it'll go through and generate a nice cut path around the outside to let me peel this out of vinyl without having to use transfer tape to go through and remove each individual letter that's in here. Next option over is join paths. Fine cut will normally do its best to cut everything. What's going to happen though is if I want this to actually be a triangle, I can line these parts up manually, but the blade will insert here, travel to here. It's a little clearer if I drop this down. It's then going to pick up and move to this next one. Depending on how far apart these are, that may leave a connecting piece of vinyl in there. So this guy right here where it says join path just gives us a fairly simple way to take open line segments and lock them into a single entity. So now that my path is joined, my cut line will be continuous all the way across and I shouldn't have any problem pulling this triangle out of the material I'm attempting to weed it out of. Next option right over here is register mark creation. And what we use this for is normally when we're printing, the printing process, the materials and the inks we use, as well as any post-processing such as lamination, can always change the size of our print. <clears throat> so when we go back through and cut everything, we want to make sure that we've adjusted for any changes that occurred during the printing process. So if I draw a rectangle around my little Mamaki logo here and press my crop mark button, I'm just going to leave this at the defaults, which are outside facing crop marks that are 10 millimeters up and down and left to right. It's got a line width of 0.4. I'm going to leave the source rectangle on there as a weed border so it's easier for me to peel this off the vinyl. I'm also going to go in and put a direction mark, which is this small triangle that appears right here. That tells me what way it was placed into the machine. And I'm going to have it do something we call fill around register marks. This is commonly used on silver or clear materials, basically to help our sensor pick up where the crop marks are. So when I click OK, you'll notice my rectangle is still there because I told it to leave a cut line. But now, in addition to that, I've got a little direction arrow that tells me which way it went through the machine, as well as my crop marks all the way around the outside. So when crop marks are used, what our plotter does is measure all four of the marks, send the measured data back over to FineCut. FineCut corrects for any differences between my digital file and what came out on the plotter and then sends the corrected cut file back. Once this process is complete, even if this is stretched or shrunk by say five or six percent, I will still be able to accurately hit this cut line all the way along the outside of the Mamaki logo. So crop marks just give me an easy way to create crop marks. There are other ways to do this. This is significantly simplified. Other options I have in here, if I have a relatively complex graphic, I can use this function right here called weed line to create weed, extra weed borders around it so it's easier to remove from the paper backing. So essentially I can go through here and just create divisions of however many I need to. For something as simple as two squares, this would be unnecessary, but on a larger file, if we had large letters or any kind of object where the vector data is relatively complex, sometimes it's easier to take these smaller pieces out of here rather than try to weed around each individual object. Next one over is a drop shadow creation. Now Illustrator and Corel Draw have very advanced drop shadow functions built into them. However, we've put into Fine Cut some simplified drop shadow structure to allow you just to put a drop shadow on your file without having to go through a lot of extra graphic design. Back to our import and output plot files. 
the last few we have over going across the bottom here. Outline extraction deals with vector data. So for any of this information to cut, we really need vectorized data, meaning that I have to have a start point, a stop point, and lines that connect them. The blade that's in the Mamaki plotter will then follow these lines. If I start off with something like this, although they look the same, this is not vectorized data. This is what we call raster data. This is just a grid of pixels. I'll give you a quick idea of what I'm talking about there. No matter how many times I zoom in on the Mamaki logo here, I'll always have a nice straight line since it's made of a vector. If I zoom back out of this and zoom in on the Mamaki logo here, you'll see the closer I zoom, we actually can see the pixels this logo is made out of. Cutters cannot cut pixels. So what this gives me the ability to do is turn this raster or pixel data into lines that can actually be cut. We'll zoom back out of here. By selecting this logo and then going over and hitting our outline extraction, basically FineCut will take a look at the pixels in the image and try to determine where lines should be. We can essentially control how many lines are going to be on there by adjusting the trace area. So that's my original image and the red represents the lines that it forms around it. Once I have some sample lines I'm happy with, I hit trace execute. Once that's on there you can see these yellow outlines coming around the outside. Now it is important to note when we're doing raster to vector conversions that we do lose a little bit of information. So if I change my view back to outline, I now do have cut data here that I can manipulate. However, if I zoom in on my registered trademark here, you'll see this is nice vector data. So I have a couple round circles, a fairly well-defined R for the registered trademark. If I go up here and take a look at my vector outline, however, let me zoom out here so I can find it. You'll notice that when we did the estimation on the smaller objects, some of the lines did not wind up where we want them. So when we're using an object like this to convert a raster file into vectors, be sure to inspect your work before you send it off to the plotter. In most cases, larger fonts are not going to be an issue, but as we get into very detailed vector files, we can definitely have problems with the results. And the last option that we have in Fine Cut basically controls where cut information is going to land. I'm going to switch this back over to my preview layout. Anytime we add an object with Fine Cut, it will create its own layers. So we started off here. You'll notice we add registration marks. We added a couple frames in here. We did the outline for our Mamaki logo. And then we have our trace layer landed in here. If we need to, what this last option lets me do is select all my cut information and basically run it off to a single layer where all the cut information can be held in one place. So if I did have just the outline or the crop marks or information that I wanted to run to a single location, this gives me the opportunity to conglomerate all my cut data onto a single layer. For example, when setting this off to raster link now, I would have one single layer with all my cut data in it. That way I don't have five or six layers depending on how the object was designed, all with different portions of cut data that I have to select. That's about everything we have for Fine Cut. Um, again, additional information for each option can be found in the Operation Manual link here. We have additional information online. We also will have separate videos up on YouTube for advanced cutting techniques, as well as the installation of Fine Cut. So please check those out if you haven't already. Thank you very much.